Good morning from a freezing cold bus stop at Stockholm Arlanda Airport. Today I'm flying down to Zurich on a Swiss Airlines AT20 Neo in economy class. Despite flying out of Terminal 5, I am able to do self check in and print my boarding pass using a self service kiosk in the check in hall of Terminal 4. Terminal 4 is connected to Terminal 5 and Terminals 3 and 2 through indoor walkways, which are not post security. If you're staying at a hotel like I am during an overnight layover, or coming from one of Atlanta Airport's various parking lots, you can access all the terminals at Atlanta Airport through a free bus shuttle that leaves every 15 to 20 minutes from multiple bus stops within the airport area. This is how I got to Atlanta Airport this morning. Most buses drop off passengers at Terminal 4. The walkway area between Terminal 4 and Terminal 5 is referred to as Sky City, primarily due to it housing the entrance to Aranda Central Station, which is the primary train station serving local and long distance trains stopping at Arlanda Airport. Arlanda North and Arlanda South stations are only served by the high speed Arlanda Express train which, if you haven't guessed, is a 20-minute high-speed train connecting Atlanta Airport to Stockholm Central Station. Besides being connected to Atlanta Central Station, the Sky City is also connected to two of Atlanta Airport's primary hotels and a shopping mall via a walkway bridge to the terminal area. Since I had already received my boarding pass from a self-service kiosk in Terminal 4, all I had to do was drop off my suitcase at another self-service kiosk, a quote-unquote self-drop baggage counter, which is essentially a screen with a scale. Never trust security wait time estimates at Arlanda Airport. Also, the airport security kinda sucks. What a TV screen estimating my security wait time said was a 20 minute wait turned out to be a 45 minute wait plus an extra free bag inspection because apparently my MacBook Air is a threat to aviation safety? I don't know man. Anyway, I'm headed to gate 6 in the concourse numbered gates F1 through 10. Sitting idle since yesterday evening is Hotel Bravo Juliet Delta Foxtrot a brand new Airbus A320neo delivered new to Swiss in February of 2022. This aircraft, named Wildhaus by the airline, was exactly one year and one month old at the time when I flew on it. As I wait for my flight, LX1255, to board, I can't help but think what a modern and spacious international terminal Atlanta Airport has. There is plenty of seating with numerous power outlets and USB ports located under seats and tables in waiting areas. Taking a look at the seat pack, you will find one quite similar to that of SAS on their AT20 Neos with a literature pocket. Below that, there is a small tray table and a storage pocket. While I have seen better legroom on airlines such as SAS, for the duration of this flight, the legroom in these economy class seats is doable. On the side of each seat, there is the usual coat hanger hook. When it comes to the seat pack, it is quite stiff and rather uncomfortable. I was surprised to find that on an aircraft that was pretty much brand new, there was no USB ports or power outlets in any of the economy or quote unquote Euro business class seats. Come on Swiss, you can do better. While these seats don't recline, I kind of agree with this aspect of the seat design Swiss has chosen, as removing the ability for passengers to recline their seats allows for a higher standard of comfort for all the passengers on board. Despite it being the middle of April, our aircraft had to be de-iced before pushing back due to the near freezing temperatures that Sweden experiences until the middle of May.
After a short taxi, here is our takeoff from runway 08 at Orlando Airport. Due to this being a morning flight, the only onboard service is a small 33 centiliter bottle of water and a Swiss branded chocolate. On evening flights, passengers on this very same route receive a small cooked pastry, so this in turn is quite disappointing. This is something that I have not seen on any airline before. Swiss is one of the first airlines to feature an all digital airline magazine, which can be accessed by scanning a QR code on the back of this card. After a smooth flight, we begin our descent over central Germany. Overall, I would rate this flight an 8 out of 10. This is mostly due to the uncomfortable seats, yes, they are worse than the seats on some Ryanair planes, and the lack of power outlets or USB ports. These issues especially bug me considering the fact that this aircraft is only a year old. Why is Swiss charging nearly three to $500 on this route when the service you get is similar to that of a budget airline? The only upside to flying this route with Swiss is the service you get, which, even at that, is lackluster. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'm always open to suggestions on how to improve my videos. Have a good day or night wherever you are in the world. Peace.